you saw it. There were thousands of people outside. I said, why didn't we get a bigger place? But who knows, who knows that this is all going to happen. You know, things are going on that are amazing. But I don't know if you saw, I just came here, we drove through thousands and thousands of people. And I feel badly for those people. Do at least, do we have speakers outside? Huh? Does anybody know? Do we have speakers outside? They do? Hello outside. We love you outside. Oh boy, that's a lot of people. I couldn't believe it. But we have that all over. I mean, we get these crowds that are incredible. And there's tremendous love and there's tremendous everything going on. It's incredible because we're going to take our country back. We're going to make our country great again. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. And it's been amazing what's going on. So we have a big, big, big election. So Tuesday, you have to get to the polls. You have to vote. It's so important. You know, they're talking. Thank you. And I'll vote for you. Someday I vote for you. But we have to do it, otherwise we're just wasting a lot of time. Honestly, we just waste time. Uh, you know, Ohio uh, has plenty of problems, believe me. Believe me, your real estate taxes are through the roof. And you know what they did is they try not to raise taxes, but they raised everybody's real estate taxes, so the tax increase is absolutely a disaster. And your governor, as you know, voted, when he was a congressman, voted for NAFTA, which is, which is absolutely you know, Ohio has never, ever come back from that. And yesterday I was in Cleveland, and you had Ford left, and you had Eaton left on the other side. Yeah, sit down, everybody. What the hell? Just sit down. Sit down. We could be here for a long time. I love it, man. We'll be here for a while. I think I have to come back, because, in fact, what we're doing... Now, I have to come back, take care of some of those people, though. That's, I feel badly. When you have that many people being turned away, that's... Well, in one way, it's good, right? Because it means they love you. In another way, it's a little bad. Now, the other candidates do not have this problem. They have empty seats all over the place, okay? They don't have this problem. So Kasich voted, as you know, for NAFTA, and now he wants to vote for Trans-Pacific, which is TPP, which is going to be worse than NAFTA, where all of the things that I've been talking about for years, monetary manipulation, it's what they do with the devaluation makes it impossible for our businesses to compete. All of these countries are going in, and believe me, China's lurking in the background. They're watching. They're not in it, but they're watching, and they're going to go in through the back in a couple of years, and they'll steal it all. So you better be careful, and I hope they don't approve it, but Kasich is in favor of it. No good. Now, today I watched him on television, and I like John. You know, he's a nice guy. But he said, did you see some of Trump's speeches? No, I haven't seen them. Oh, he's the only person in America that hasn't seen them. <laughs> and so they said, did you see him? No. Well, I don't really watch television. When I watch television, I only watch Golf Channel. I don't watch the news. I don't watch politics. I said, Wait a minute. We all like Golf Channel, too, but you're running for president. The only thing he watches on television is Golf Channel. So he's, he's not going to do the job, okay? Not going to do the job. We have so many problems with this country. We have so many problems. And we're going to make this country so great, so strong. We're going to build up our military. And we're not going to use our military. We're not going to have to use our military, hopefully. But nobody's going to mess with us. We're going to take care of our vets. The vets are very important. They're our great people. we got to take care of our vets, right? These are great, great people. Thank you, Dar. I love that sign. Look at that beautiful sign. Thank you. Boy, that's incredible. I, I tell this story, and it's sort of an amazing story, but a very, very good friend of mine is a very successful guy. And he always, I mean, always, he hears about, how many people are you speaking in front of today, Don? I said 21,000 people in Dallas, 35,000 people a couple of weeks ago in Alabama. He said, how do you do that? This is one of the most successful guys. And I said, you know, I don't really know, and I'm not a big note person. I don't read speeches because I don't like to. I do. It's easier to read speeches. But you want to put everyone to sleep? Just read speeches, right? <laughs> Plus, you can't comment on things like a Golf Channel. You know, with Kasich, with Golf Channel. 
because you don't put that in the speech because it's too current. I just heard it a couple of hours ago. Uh, but, but he said, how do you do it? And I, and I really mean this. There's such love in these stadiums and these rooms. And there's such love. They took this room just very quickly because we just wanted to come up here and say hello. You know, I used to work in Cincinnati. And it's true. The Queen City. I love Cincinnati. But I worked here, and I tell the story. I wrote about it and I think, The Art of the Deal. But I wrote about it, and it was great. Am I right? And it was a great feeling. My father and I, we bought a job called Swifton Village, and it was very sick. It had, I think, 1,164 units. And I spent my entire summers, two summers, working, working, working. I loved the job. I loved, I loved Cincinnati, I must tell you. I really loved it. And... And we bought it for very little from FHA, Federal Housing, and sold it for a big profit. And we got, we got out, we sold it, and now I know the area hasn't been very good, but at least we were able to predict that. But I tell you, it was a great experience. It's sort of like a baseball player gets the first hit, or a golfer sinks the first three-foot putt or something, and it gave you confidence because, it was, you know, I was very young when I did that job, and it was my baby, and it was just an amazing experience. And I loved, I just loved the whole, the whole deal. And then we, I also got very familiar with the people of Kentucky. And, you know, do we have people? Yeah. But I loved them. And by the way, who won Kentucky recently, right? Right? Trump. So. But I used to drive as a young guy. I used to drive. Well, it adds excitement, doesn't it, folks? You know, you really ask, what are they doing, right? What are they doing? It's the same thing everywhere. You know, sometimes not so much. Uh, we had one yesterday where we had seven or eight incidents where they stand up and they say, oh, something, and everybody shouts them down. And, it, you know, it's fine. Honestly, in certain ways, in certain ways, it makes it more exciting, okay, to be honest. It does. Makes it more exciting. We might have a couple of more. Anybody else want to stand up right now? I uh, so anyway, it's a shame that we wasted two tickets, though. Two tickets where we have all those great people outside. It's a shame. But I used to, I used to drive to Kentucky Friday nights and spend time in Kentucky. True. And I just had a great time there. I mean, I loved Kentucky, and, and it was so amazing. You know, when I went out and when I did this, I was not supposed to win Kentucky, right? And did I win in a landslide? We won. We won in a landslide. So they must have remembered me in Kentucky when I was young, and they said, we're going to give him our vote, but it was amazing. But Ohio is so important. That Tuesday vote is so important because... If we can do that, I think we're going to do great in Florida. Polls came out in Florida today, which are fantastic. Now, who knows? But who knows? I mean, I think we're going to do very well. Look, they have an absentee senator. He's absentee, totally. He's got one of the worst voting records in the last 25 years in the Senate. He doesn't vote. You know, they put him in. He's a young guy. They put him in, and he goes out. You know who I'm talking about, right? Who am I talking about? Little Marco. Marco. Marco, Marco. But, but he's, and he got a little nasty with me for a while, but that's okay. He got nasty. They all get nasty, and then you end up winning, and you just forget about them. <laughs> we got nasty with him, too. You know, in the last debate, my, uh, my daughter and my wife, they said, don't, just let them say whatever they want. Let them all say whatever they want. Act presidential. I said, I can't do that. I can't do that. <laughs> When they come at you, you have to go back. Don't we agree? I mean, what are you going to do, stand there? You can't do it. You have, to, you have to hit them back. And you hit them hard enough, all of a sudden they collapse. Well, think of it. Think of it. Every person, we started off with 17. Now we're down to a few, and I'm certainly a couple are getting out very soon. 
but including the governor, the governor here didn't win one state yet. And he's not allowed. He didn't qualify. I don't know. Is this a big story? It doesn't seem to be a big story. I don't understand it. He didn't qualify in Pennsylvania. He didn't have the signatures. Does anyone know that? It was just announced he didn't qualify in Pennsylvania. So if he doesn't qualify in Pennsylvania, he shouldn't be running on Tuesday, right? I mean, I think. So anyway, hey, look, that's his problem. Hopefully we can just beat him. Who cares if he qualifies in Pennsylvania? But, but he, he is somebody, and he's been very nice to me. I've been very nice to him. But he does this nice, you know, this nice routine. Yeah, I want to be the grown-up in the room. I want to be. But he didn't start out that way. Do you remember the first two debates? He came at me. Oh, and I said, wait a minute, what's this? And he came at me viciously. And I'm telling you. And that's why I remember, because, you know, now he's been the last probably six or seven or eight debates. He's been going, well, you know, I, I'm, the, I'm the guy that's the grown-up. I want to be really nice. Take, take a look at the first two debates, debates. Remember when I went after him? I said, you ran Lehman Brothers into the ground and it almost destroyed the world. Don't tell me about that. And all of a sudden he sort of shut up, but he was vicious. Which is okay, you know, he's a governor, he's supposed to be a little bit vicious, right? But now he's, you know, playing the good guy. And then I had some commercials done in New Hampshire. So I'm up in New Hampshire, and I, which I won also. I love New Hampshire. I love those people. I love New Hampshire. You know the problem, New Hampshire has a big problem. And I told him I'm going to take care of this problem. New Hampshire has a tremendous problem with heroin. Can you believe it? New Hampshire is such a beautiful place. It's so pristine, so, you know, the trees and the beautiful little roads and the countryside. And you go into, like, groups like this, you know, large, 1,500 people, 500 people. Every single time you ask a group, what's your big problem in New Hampshire, they say heroin and drugs. And you don't see it. It doesn't go here, too. Here, too. Here, too. All right, here, too. Oh, we're going to build the wall, folks. Don't worry about it. We're going to build the wall. Think of it. We get the drugs, they get the money. Not a good deal, right? Not a good deal. No, we're going to build a wall, and Mexico's going to pay for the wall. It's very simple. Look, here's the story. Here's the story. Mexico, Mexico, going to pay $58 billion in trade. That's our imbalance. $58 billion a year. That's our imbalance. People don't know that. And these senators come up, Marco and Lion Ted. You know Lion Ted? He walks in, holds up the Bible, and I'm beating him. I'm just killing him with evangelicals because they don't like liars. Oh, they don't like liars. He comes in with the Bible, holds it up high, puts it down, and then he lies. I mean, I, I call him Lion Ted. And you know why he hasn't, he was supposed to win South Carolina because I think it's 68% evangelical. And Trump got the evangelicals. And that was the day after the Pope scolded me. But the Pope was told by Mexico that Trump wants to stop the border and the Pope didn't like that. And the Pope really, I said, you know, sort of interesting. So I'm getting ready, they're getting ready for the vote in South Carolina. And my people come up, Mr. Trump, we have a problem. This is the day before the vote. And I said, what? what's the problem? They said, it's the Pope. I said, the Pope? I said, that's a big problem, right? The Pope. I like the Pope. I do like the Pope. I said, why? What did I do with the Pope? I said, let me ask you, is it a good thing or a bad thing? They said, not good. So the Pope hit me because he didn't like the fact that we're going to close up the borders. And people are going to come in, but they're going to come in legally. they got to come in legally. Okay. So... And the drugs that are poisoning our youth, they're not coming in, folks. They're not coming in. So anyway, okay, that's a long story. So I, I get this thing, and they say the Pope, and because he was with Mexico, and I like Mexico, and I have a lot of respect for their leadership, much smarter than our leadership, and that's why, I mean, we can't make good deals because our leaders are not smart when it comes to trade. Minor things like trade, military, health care, common core, all these things. You know, they're not too good at any of it, okay? They don't, they're not good at anything. You want to know the truth. But so I get a call, say, the Pope. So... Then I said, the Pope was sort of angry because he was told by Mexico that I wanted closed borders. 
The Pope didn't know that tremendous crime is coming across the border, that drugs are pouring across the butter, border, and, and just didn't know. I mean, he would, and the next day he was so nice. The next day the Pope was so terrific, and he did something. He issued something. I don't think it was exactly an apology. I don't want an apology, but he was great. We went to the polls, and I won South Carolina in a massive landslide. <laughs> And Lion Ted got very few votes, and that was supposed to be his, that was supposed to be his deal. But people don't know, they just don't like it when people lie. You remember with Ben Carson, by the way, who endorsed me yesterday, which is great. And remember in Iowa where Ben Carson was running, and you know, all of a sudden, the rumor was going out all over the place that he left the race. He didn't leave the race. Lion Ted said he left the race. He's not, and so vote for him. And you can't do that. You know, you can't do that. And then right after the election, he went and apologized to Ben. A lot of good that does. They should have disqualified him. You want to know the truth. They actually should have disqualified him. And they had it down many different ways. So anyway, so we're going to run and we're going to do some incredible things. And we're going to bring our country back. And we're going to bring it back in every aspect. And frankly, Hillary is a disaster, by the way. You know that. A disaster. And despite all of the stuff you see with Bernie, 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 it's not, it's not going to be Bernie, it's going to be Hillary. But unless, unless the FBI does its thing, because she's got a problem. Anybody else, look at all the people that were so badly hurt by doing much less than she did, including General Petraeus, a good guy, destroyed. He was destroyed for doing much less than what she did. So let's see what happens. I'm sort of predicting that certainly they would have done it already if they're going to do it. How can they let her run and then all of a sudden do it? So let's see what happens. But I, I know she's probably doing okay. Did you ever see anybody embrace President Obama like she's embracing him? Oh, the president is great. He's great. We love this plan. We love that plan. We love everything. She loves everything. TPP, interestingly, she originally liked it. Now she doesn't like it. She wants, you know, and then if he wants it, she's going to want it again. So I don't know what his, if you know his position, you know, his position is I like it. So I assume she likes it because everything that he wants. Now, why is she being so nice to the president? You know, they didn't like each other for years, right? So why? Do you know? That's right. That's right. She wants to see. Yeah. For, for him? For, yeah, that's right. She'll board him, and she'll make him Supreme Court judge. Oh, that's interesting. That's, well, he, you know, hey, he might just executive order himself into that position. You never know. You never know. I mean, nobody ever heard of executive orders until this guy came along. And he, you know, he doesn't do it where you get a group of people in the room and you make the deals. And you always make good deals for your side, but you make like Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill. But anyway, so look, we have so many problems. One of the problems actually is that problem, Supreme Court. If a Democrat gets in, you already lost in losing Scalia. That was a terrible thing because he was a great guy. But nobody ever thought, nobody ever thought that was going to happen. I mean, that came out of the blue. They were thinking others that were older, and they were thinking others, all of us, and that's the way life is. Things happen, you have no idea it's going to happen, that's the way life is. So we lost Scalia. So now, whoever the new president is could actually get up to four and maybe even five Supreme Court justices. So let's assume that Hillary gets in, and she's going to put, well, no, no, if you don't, and I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, a guy like Ted Cruz can never beat her in the general election. Never in a million years, will never beat her. But she gets in, she's going to appoint four or five judges. You will never as a country recover from that. That's one of the most important things. In fact, some people are angry. You know, I used to be establishment. I was a big contributor and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden I said, run. And they said, Donald's running. He's not going to want our money. And if he doesn't want our money, he's not going to listen to us. I'm self-funding my campaign, folks. And... They're not happy about it. They are not happy about it. Because when the pharmaceutical companies, which give millions and millions of dollars to these centers, when all these, when all these people and all these companies, you know, they give it to the lobbyists and through the lobbyists and the special interests, the pharmaceutical companies, you look at oil and gas, everything. 
Everything is controlled in Washington. So when I said I'm running, how, when was the last time you saw somebody run where they said, I'm self-funding? Did you ever remember anybody? No, no. Did you ever remember? In Washington, they have lobbyists and they have like Rubio up on their forehead. It's emblazoned. I take care of Rubio. I take care of Cruz. They have these people. They're lobbyists. They're very good. You got to pay them a lot of money. And they go in and they get you what you need. You know, usually. Usually they get you what you need. But these guys are totally controlled. Like the drug industry does very little bidding. They bid like, you know, they get, they, they get like, if you go to the drugstore and buy drugs, drugs to make you better, right? I mean, you're paying the same price. The United States is the largest drug buyer in the world. Wouldn't you think we'd be able to buy pretty well? We don't buy. We don't bid. And then you look at it, you know, people like Woody Johnson of Johnson & Johnson was in charge of Jeb Bush's campaign. So what would happen if Jeb got in? Jeb didn't make it. I guess you probably heard that Jeb didn't make it. But he says, low energy. We don't need low energy, folks. We need very strong energy. When you see China, when you see the way, I, I've done a great deals with China. I've made a lot of money with China. When you see China coming at you, and you see Japan coming at you, and you see Mexico, you saw Vincente Fox the other day, right? Where he used the F-bomb, nobody reported it. They didn't care if he used the F-bomb. Can you imagine if I said what he said? I told people this morning it would be the electric chair. I wouldn't be here right now. It's true. But he said, we will not pay for the wall, which made me actually happy, because two years ago he said, we won't allow a wall to be built. So now we've already got the first, he's allowing a wall. But he said, we will not pay for the you-know-what wall, right? And they're going to pay. And the reason they're going to pay, very simple, with the kind of money that we lose on Mexico in trade, with a trade imbalance, when you have a trade imbalance of $58 billion a year, a $10 billion wall is peanuts, right? So when these guys come off the stage, you don't really mean that, Mexico's going to pay for the war. I said, of course they're going to pay for the war. But Vincente Fox was so angry when he did that interview. I don't know. I think it was with CNN. Was it with CNN? They're all back there. Look at them. What a lot of... The most dishonest. You know who's really dishonest? The New York Times. They write stories. They never even call me. You know, you don't even have... They write stories. They're so inaccurate. They don't care. It's a badly run newspaper. It's a horrible, it's failing. It's going to be, well, it'll either be out of business or a very rich person will buy it and just have it as a lavalier. But the New York Times is the worst newspaper. They do a big story. They won't even call you for a comment. They don't care. And when you call them because you want a comment, like I had a person recently for something, call. No, we don't want your comment. We don't want to come. They write a story. And then it's all wrong. And they couldn't care less if it's wrong. That's why I said, we have to do something with the libel laws, folks. You have to, when you're libel, you have to be able to go and sue a newspaper and get them to change. And in addition to that, get some money. Now, that's not freedom of speech. That's not to change. All we want is for them to be honest. But when you have a dishonest newspaper like the New York Times, you have to be able to sue them. You have to be able to do it. Because the level of dishonesty, and that's why I talk about so many of them, but the level of dishonesty of the press is beyond belief. Far greater than you would ever think. Believe me, because you don't see it as much. I see it. I see it. They do stories that are so bad, that are so wrong, and knowingly wrong. They do it for headlines. They do it for, for whatever. And they're all having a hard time. You know, they're losing money. But, but a lot of them are losing money because people have given up on them. Like, for instance, I go around, and whenever I talk about the media, the place always stands up and boos the hell out of the media. They're less popular than politicians, which is pretty amazing when you think of it. So, so this forum is really cool. I haven't done this in a while. I love doing this. I love this forum. Uh, the problem is you don't get that many people in the room. That's, you know, it's got to be a little more intimate, but I love doing this forum. So what I want to do is we'll take some questions, and then I'm going to come back because we're going to have to do a much larger room because I feel so guilty about what we have over there. I mean, really feel guilty about all the people outside, many of whom we told to just leave, I'll come back. Even if I come back after the election, I'm coming back, okay? Well, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. If I win, I know I'm coming back. If I lose, yeah, maybe not. Okay, go ahead.
Nice hat. Cincinnati. Oh, we love Cincinnati. Mr. What do you Rose. think? Hey, by the way, Pete Mr. Rose, let him in, right? Right. Yeah. What are they doing? Mr. Mr. Trump. You know, before you start, wait, Charlie Hustle, right? So I watched him and I, I he was a great player. And it's so ridiculous. Don't you think he's paid the price? First of all, he didn't bet on his, he bet that he would win, not on the other team or anything, right? But look, he's not supposed to do it. It's a terrible thing, all that stuff. How long has he been waiting? Like 30 years, 35 years? He's got more hits than anybody. He was so good. I still remember when he went into second base and he took out Doug Harrelson, right? Right? That was the name of the second base. We're good. That means still good. But, you know, uh, we got to let Pete Rose into the Hall of Fame. And, you know, you know, Charlie Hustle, if, if I were the commissioner, honestly, I would do it. He would be so popular. I have never met a group, even people that just used to root against him, which was hard to do because he was really good. Uh, but even people that used to root against him, they'd say, let him in. And I don't know what Major League Baseball is doing. Who cares? But let Pete Rose into the Hall of Fame. Do you agree with that? Better agree. Okay, go ahead. This guy agrees. I can tell you with that hat on. I, I love you, Donald Trump, Thank man. You. You're the Thank future you. of Thank America. You. Thank you, man. Um, Thank you. I just, I just, uh, just real quick. Uh, and I've been waiting 17 hours to see you today. I got here. Unbelievable. At I got here 11 o'clock last night. I was the very first one here. I just wanted to know, and I didn't get front row, I'm in the second row, but with that said... Were they here before you? No, no. right? <laughs> ah, that's pretty good. I would love to get a pitch with you before I leave do today. It. I'll do that. Thank I'll you. Do. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Go ahead. Right over here. Hi, I'm Robin from Cincinnati Soldiers Support, and I have a very special person here with us today, Mr. Keith Moppin, and I think everybody... Everybody in this yeah. room knows who Mr. Moppin is. Um, Where? Where? Mr. Keith Moppin. Keith, stand oh. up. Hey, Keith. I'm going to let Keith ask the question. Um, a lot of courage, right? Keith, Keith is a veteran, and his son um, was captured in Iraq, and, uh, and he was killed and uh, Keith would like to ask you a question because we all know that uh, that you support our veterans POW more than anybody and by everyone far everyone else Mr. McCain uh, he went through years of trying to get his son back John McCain would not help him we know that you would help our POWs John McCain has not helped a lot of people like he should that I can tell you so, that's true go, go ahead. ahead how are you doing how are you doing? nice to see you <clears throat> go ahead I, I come here because you made a comment to John McCain okay. that you don't think that captured soldiers are heroes. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, was, I, I never did well, that. What you I want that. you to do okay, go is ahead. just clarify that for me okay. because I think it's important for all these people here yeah. and for a lot of veterans that's in Ohio, especially Ohio. And I know yeah. what you were doing. You know exactly what I was doing. But I wanted but you to explain that. But they are heroes, just so you understand, and real heroes, okay? You know okay. that. Thank you. Oh, that's for me. Wow. Thank you. Very nice. I like that. Thank you. Thank you me. know that. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, who else? Go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. Trump, I have four sons in the Army, and my one son is a nurse psychiatric practitioner okay. dealing with the PTSD. He tells me every day that my son, Lieutenant Cordic, is overwhelmed dealing with this what are your plans to help him out and he does want to support you're talking you. at the va no he actually is a lieutenant in the army he's a nurse right. practitioner psychiatric nurse right so they're he's the one they see first and the biggest issue he says that no one in the va very few of them understand what the, they have gone through he's telling me that it's better that they have some help they need more help on the psychiatric side to help him transition these soldiers out and he has none he it's says he's over o totally overwhelmed and he says right. we got to get the soldiers who are unemployed who don't have jobs he said i would love to have them help me to deal with this and there's nobody else and one other quick thing we need a new first lady since nancy's gone okay well so 
That is such a big problem, and I hear it from so many different people. And also, I mean, the big problem is with the VA. It's horribly run. It's a corrupt enterprise. It's really corrupt. And you look at what's going on in Phoenix with the VA. It's a disaster, a complete disaster. We're going to take care of the problem. They are having a tremendous problem with that. I fully know it. I fully understand it. We're going to do something about it. We have no choice. We have to do something about it. The truth is we have to treat our veterans much, much better. Our veterans are not being treated well. Right? Thank you, man. Thank you. How about, how about over there, the young man in the middle? Go ahead. You get up together? Good. I like that. Hi. You know each other? Yeah, we're yeah. together. Okay. Hi, this is my friend Lily. We're both from Dayton, Ohio. We were actually um, at your rally yesterday. Oh, good. So. Was it good? Was yeah, it good? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. That was a great rally. But uh, actually, we're both interns for Senator Portman here in Ohio, and we volunteered for your campaign. Um, but we were just wondering, maybe you heard or maybe you didn't. John Houston, um, just earlier this week, refused to let 17-year-olds who are even going to be 18 by the general election not vote in this primary. And I know that a lot of young voters, a lot of people we talk to support Bernie or Hillary, and he is a Republican. So what do you feel about well, that? Well, you know, interestingly, we have a lot of young people. They don't talk about it. We have, you saw yesterday and you see all the time, and yourselves. We have so many young people at these rallies, it's incredible. Look even here, look at this. Look at all these. Oh, stand up, all you young people. Now look at... No, we have... I would bet you, and, and you know, I would, I would seriously think we have as many young people at least as Bernie. We have so many young people at our rallies and it actually surprises me to a large extent. So you're talking about the 17. You're voting for Trump, right? You're okay with me. You are okay with me. You can vote for me anytime. So what's going to be the problem? Go ahead. No, I was just curious is that even though he's a Republican, do you still support him with that? Or do you think that... Do I support... You, John Houston with his decision. Well, I have to look at the decision, darling. Honestly, I have to look at it. You tell me what to do. You're with me. You're working with us. You're a volunteer. What do you want me to do? If I could vote, I actually missed the deadline by four months. I would definitely vote for you. Uh, we love you. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. A young one here. A young one. You are young. How old are you? I'm a seventh grader. Wow, that's beautiful. So many young people. Um, so many young people. Go ahead. Um, I'd like to know what you would do for my education in the next four years. Number one, your country is going to be safe. Because, you know, if you don't have a safe country, and with people that aren't very good at what they do, like the people running our country now, you might very well, and don't underestimate this, you might very well not have a safe country. And it's so important. You know, number one, the number one thing we have to do is security, safety. And I'm not just talking at the border. I'm talking about our military. We have to build it up. We have to replenish it. You know, a friend of mine has a son who is in, he served three terms over in Iraq, three tours. And he comes home and I see him. And his biggest complaint is that the enemy has better equipment than us. And it's our equipment. So we give the equipment to people that we think are working with us. You know, the old story's been going on for years. And a bullet's fired in the air. They drop the equipment and run. Brand new Humvees, brand new everything. And he's saying, we have older equipment, and they have beautiful new stuff. And it really bothers the hell out of them. So we're going to take care of that, folks. We're going to take care of it. We're not going to let this kind of nonsense happen anymore. We're going to work very hard on education, just so you understand. Common Core is dead. Do you know what Common Core is? And most importantly, most important thing we can do in terms of education for you and your age, we're getting education out of Washington, D.C., run by the bureaucrats. And we're going to bring the education to the local area. You around this area? We're going to bring the education where your mother and your father and everybody else's parents and uncles, and they, they, they love they love you. Do you think your parents love you? Huh? They run it with love, okay? In Washington, and, and look, not everybody's bad, but you basically have bureaucrats that want to make, you know, they get a lot of money, and they don't know what's going on in Cincinnati, and they don't know what's going on in Ohio. So we're getting rid of Common Core, and it's going to be dead, 
and we're going to have local, locally based education, and you're going to see a big difference. Big difference. All right. Very important. Good question. It's actually a great question. Okay. How about over here? What about you? Right there, Red. I'm from Ohio. My name is Misty, and my entire family is from Kentucky. They were all very happy to vote for you in the Kentucky oh, primary. Thank you, thank you. It is so refreshing to have a presidential candidate that is not bought and paid for. That who is, is self-funding. That and is. I 100% believe in you that you will make America great again. Oh, thank you so much. That's better than a question. I love it. We'll take care, okay? Thank you. Thank you, whole family. Now, that was such a great thing that happened in Kentucky, because in theory, people would say, you know, well, how does Trump? A couple of people said, how did Trump win Kentucky? And we didn't even win it. We won it in a major, major landslide. And I love Kentucky. I, I'll never forget it. OK, go ahead, darling. Right here. Right here. I love this every once in a while. You know, instead Hi, of I am Evelyn Stalevich, uh, Mr. Trump. I don't have a question for you. I'm really glad to hear the other questions. But I just wanted to tell you that I am so happy that you are running for the next president oh, of our country. You. Where are you from with that beautiful accent? Tell yeah, me. I am from Managua, Nicaragua, Central America. I'm telling you. Yes. The Hispanics. Yes. We're going to do so well with the Hispanics. Yeah. People know. And what I wanted to say also, I want to thank you for what you are doing in our country. You are giving our country the opportunity to dream, to hope that there is hope in America, that we have a Christian Sorry. nation, and that we are a country of laws, and that we are a sovereign nation. And I want to give you thanks. God bless you. Thank you, darling. That was so nice. Wow. Thank you, darling. That was so nice. That was, come here, get over here. That was so nice, come here. That was so nice. Thank you very much. And you are so handsome. I love your blue eyes. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's so nice. Thank you. Okay, who has a good question? Who has a good one? Let's go, let's go. We gotta go here. Go ahead, the big strong guy here. Right here, I'm coming. I'm really in. Go ahead. Just got out of football practice. <laughs> Hi, I'm Zach. I'm from Kentucky. Uh, woo! Uh, I have one question. On um, what day in office will you put Hillary in prison? So, you know, there's a six-year statute of limitations, I guess. And Hillary's fighting for a lot. You know, if she makes it, nothing's going to happen. If she doesn't make it, certainly you have to look into it. You have to look into it very strongly because so many lawyers, whether you watch them on television, whether you read them in the newspapers, whether you see them wherever you see them, I mean, very rarely do you see a lawyer that says that she's innocent of this this horrible situation and you actually have to ask yourself why'd she do it what's the big deal why would she do it why would she do that other than it's always the same thing with them it's sneaking around the corner it's sneaky dirty stuff it's gone on like that for years it's gone on like that for years so i will tell you you know number one it's not me but certainly people are going to look and you know what if there's anything wrong and you have to do it you have to do that you have to do that because so many people have asked me that same question and you have no idea and she's being protected. Look, let's face it. Look, it's not complicated. What she did certainly to me is certainly she broke the law to me. What do I know? To me, she broke the law. And it looks so bad from the standpoint of the rest of the country and even from the standpoint of all those people that did something much less. So many people did something much less how do you think they feel? 
How do you think Petraeus feels? How do you think all these other people feel? And here she is, she's got a clear path to running for president. But you know what? The first thing I have to do with Hillary is beat her. The next thing we'll do is we'll look into that. Okay? We'll beat her. We'll beat her. And, and you know, it's interesting. We haven't even started on her yet. I'm, I gotta finish off the, we have to finish off the deck. We have to finish off the deck. And the best thing you could do, honestly, your governor, remember, NAFTA, get rid of this, look, just don't get rid of him, let him be governor. One other thing about him, he runs for president, he's lived in New Hampshire forever. He, he said there, he had the record, more than Chris, more than anybody by far. He lived in New Hampshire, he moved out of the state. And he said he was gonna win New Hampshire. He did poorly there. He then moved to, right, south, didn't he? I mean, he didn't, I think he went to South Carolina, and then he moved to Michigan. Now, he said, I thought, and I must be mistaken, but he said that he's going to win Michigan, and he's going to win it easily. I won it in a landslide. But he said he's going to win Michigan, he's going to win it easily. So he went to South Carolina, stayed there, lost. Lost in New Hampshire. He went to Michigan, and I thought he said, because it's a neighboring state, I thought he said he would win Michigan, and if he didn't win, he'd give up and let him be your governor. But he moved to Michigan, spent all his time in Michigan, and you know, you people have a lot of problems. Your coal industry is dead, your steel industry is dying, it's dying badly. He's voting for the wrong things, and the TPP in particular, and you know, he should be home, be governor. But he moved to that, so now he goes to Michigan, and two weeks ago, I won Michigan by a lot, by like a landslide, essentially. Yeah, a landslide. And when I won Michigan, I said, oh, good, that's good. Kasich is going to drop out of, he's going to drop out of Ohio, and that's good. But he didn't drop out. So, you know, I think you got to show him, folks. You can't do that. You can't be an absentee governor. You got to run for governor. You got to be governor. And you know what? If you don't want to do that, you take out. And same thing with Marco Rubio. He runs for the Senate. He never shows up to vote. The guy never shows up to vote. And the people of Florida, you don't think they get it? Take a look at his poll numbers. They really get it. Because what he did to the people of Florida is defraud them. He said, I'm going to run. I'm going to represent you. I'm going to represent you. And about 15 minutes after he got in, he starts running for president. Then it's wrong. And by the way, other people running for president, they get to vote a lot more than he does. He never votes. I think he's going to set an all-time record. So, uh, so let's see what happens. But we got to win in Ohio. If we can win Ohio, we're going to run the table, folks. We're going to run the table. Got to win in Ohio. Go ahead. Give her that mic. Uh, you just shout it out. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. That's great, by the way. That's great. A lot of people are in that same. They want to retire. They're afraid that they're not going to have anything to go by. They think their insurance companies are going bust. They think a lot of, a lot of problems. Look what's happened with the stock market going down. Did you get affected by that, by the stock market? going down in terms of values you've been affected a lot of people have been affected so go ahead what's your question we're gonna make this country so strong we're not gonna stand for losing 500 billion dollars a year with China for losing 58 billion with Mexico for losing hundreds with Japan we're gonna make our country strong again you know our military okay our military everyone sees our military budget they don't realize we take care of Germany. Nobody even probably knows that. We take care of Japan. Do you know that if we're attacked, we have a treaty with Japan. If we're attacked, Japan doesn't have to help us. If Japan gets attacked, we're in, third world, we're in the third world war. We have a new war going on, okay? Now, what kind of deals are these? What kind of deals? But we take care of Japan. We take care of South Korea. I, I love all these countries. I think it's great. Except we owe 19 trillion dollars can't do it we got to be you know reasonable we can't do it so we're taking care of South Korea when the maniac next door acts up 
we start up those battleships, we start up those aircraft carriers, let's say, and we start up, you know, our planes are flying. We spend millions and millions of dollars. They don't pay us. They pay us very little. You know, in South Korea, and I love South Korea, I have buildings in South Korea. We have, and it's, they're great people. We have a border in South Korea, we have 28,000 soldiers. What they pay us is peanuts. What Japan pays us is peanuts. So we protect the world. Saudi Arabia is the greatest of them all. So we protect Saudi Arabia. Until the oil went down, and now they're making half, which is still a lot. But until the oil went down, Saudi Arabia was making a billion dollars a day, right? We protect them. We protect them. And we protect them for peanuts. So all of that stuff is going to change, folks. We're going to end up with a strong country again, a powerful country, and we're going to end up with a respected country again. Because we're not respected. We're not respected. All right, two more questions. Come on. Two more questions. Uh, what's your question? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. My name's Roger. I'm here since I'm also the CEO of the Motorcycle Rifle Association. And we've endorsed your We campaign. are going to save the Second Amendment, right. Roger. I got something for We're you. That's what I was asking you about. Throw it. Throw it. There you go. Yeah, go, give it to me. There you go. Whoops, get sorry. me that card, would you please? Thank you. Get me the card. Thank you very much. Get me that That's card. That's what we're concerned about. So you about. endorsed me? Yes, sir. I we heard did. about we that. We endorsed you. Heard about it. Yes, I we heard were, about we're actually Thank participating. I'm glad I told him to stand That's up. your membership card. A lifetime membership. I like it. I Good like deal. It. Good. Thank and you. And we're so covering a lot of motorcycle rallies right now for you. And that you know, it's a funny thing. I don't get it, but I do get it. Do you know the motorcycle guys love Trump? Do you know that? Yeah. Every place I go, right? And I'm not too much on the motorcycles, right? But, but every place I go, there's hundreds of guys with motorcycles, and they say, we love you, Mr. Trump, we love you. You know what they love? They want to see a strong country. They want to see a strong military. They want to see a strong everything. They want infrastructure. They want our highways fixed. I mean, if I'm driving a motorcycle, I don't want to go over potholes, believe me, okay? Not good. But the motorcycle people love Donald Trump. Go ahead, darling. Go ahead. I just want to say, my sister is in South Carolina. She's the top activist for South Carolina. She's the right. Her name is Michelle Wiles, and she works with Jerry Midtown. Okay. Jerry's great. I know Jerry. Come on. You know what? Let her come up here. Come on. Uh, okay. How about, how about one more? Who's, who's got a good one? Wait, I have to get a hug. I have to get a hug. Come on. Come on. You're great. Say hello. She's fantastic. Thank you, everybody. All right, who's got a good one? Who's got a good one? Ha! Ah, maybe I have to go back here, right? How about, who's got a good one? Who's got a nice one? Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, the two of you, right here. Go ahead. My, my name is Katrina, and I'm Native American. Great. My um, Native name is Woman Who Sees. Ah. Do you know that all of the other um, ethnic groups that we've supposedly done things to have been apologized to, but at no point the Native Americans have been apologized to? After you take the oath, maybe in the first month or so you could say, I'm sorry as I could be that we did what we did to you. Well, I'll certainly look into it. You know, I haven't been big on apologizing. You do know that, right? <laughs> they, they complain Trump never apologizes. I'll look into it. We're going to do one more. I'm going to look into that. Okay, let's go. One more. Come on. We want a good one. Give me a fun one. Give me a fun question, okay? All right, go ahead. It better be good, because I don't want to leave with a bad question. Thanks for Come on. Worst thing you can do, you do well, you do great, everybody's having a good time, and then we get a bum question. What are you doing? Just stay there. Go ahead. Relax. Go ahead. Okay, Mr. Trump. First of all, I want to thank you, you and your family, for stepping out in faith 
to take this country forward. I so far like this question. Okay. The second thing, and as I know, what impressed me the most about you is your strategic ability to get things done. If I was to ask you in a unified manner, because you got people on one side of the aisle, the other side of the aisle, which I disagree about the aisle anyway. I think we ought to be working together. But strategically, what could you do, or what do you see yourself doing in your plans to improve and bring leadership and dedication and integrity back to Washington, D.C.? Uh, well, let, let me just tell you, and it's, a, you know, it's sort of the kind of question that's very important, not exactly the most exciting question, but you know what it is? You know what it is? Look, you have an ability to lead. You either can lead or you can't lead. And you can learn something about leadership, but basically you're a leader or you're not a leader. I'll get people together. We're going to make great deals. We're going to make conservative deals. We're going to make wonderful deals. We're going to get along with people. We're going to get along with Democrats. We're going to get along with liberals. We're going to make deals. You know, you can't have Obama just everything he signs a, an executive order, and then they'll start getting thrown out by the courts at some point. And maybe not, because if the Supreme Court goes the way, I mean, all of these things will be upheld. But look, we need great leadership. We're going to, we just discussed with this man's great, this great question. We're going to be leading on education. Get rid of Common Core. We're going to lead on education. We're going to lead on health care. We're going to get rid of Obamacare. Repeal and replace. We're going to lead with our military. We're going to lead at the border. We're going to take care of our vets. We're going to do so good. And you know what's so important? We don't win anymore, folks. We don't win anymore. You know, you look at our country. When was the last time you saw a victory with our country? We don't have any victory. We have a military can't beat ISIS, right? Can't beat ISIS. You look at our great generals of the past. They're spinning in the grave. They can't beat ISIS. And we don't fight them. We don't fight to win anymore. We fight to be politically correct. If you're going to have an enemy, you got to win. you got to win. Look at the way I'm doing. I mean, you got to win. You got to take them out. You got to take them out. So look, folks, we're going to start winning again. We're going to be the smart country. Right now, we're not a respected country. We're going down. We're going in the wrong direction. We're going to start winning on health care, on borders, on military. We're going to win so much. You're going to be so happy. You are going to remember this day, and you're going to more importantly remember Tuesday when you go to vote. And in two years and three years and ten years, you're going to say there was a single greatest vote I ever cast. I love you. I love Ohio. I love Ohio and I love Kentucky. And I hope you go out and I hope you vote and bring us home a big, beautiful victory on Tuesday. Thank you.